In Activity 10, New Plants from Plant Parts, students discover that not all new plants come from seeds. Students first distinguish between a tuber and a bulb, then plant a potato and an onion in water and observe the plant parts take root and grow. Finally, students place a leaf cutting in water and observe the cutting develop roots to conclude that new plants can be generated from the parts of old ones. You will need the following materials from the kit. Activity Sheet 10, Parts A and B, magnifiers, crayons, clear plastic jars, paper towels, a rubber band, masking tape, toothpicks, and plastic trays. You will also need to provide an African violet plant, onions, plastic wrap, medium-sized potatoes with multiple eyes, a paring knife, scissors, and tap water. To prepare for session one, make a copy of Activity Sheet 10, Part A, for each student. Fill a jar with water and place a piece of plastic wrap over the mouth of the jar and secure it with a rubber band. Then poke nine holes evenly spaced in the wrap. Students will place their leaf cuttings in these holes. Purchase one African violet plant, five medium-sized white potatoes with eyes, and five onions. Each student will need a magnifier. Each team of four will need three toothpicks, one jar, some tap water, two boxes of crayons, and a masking tape label for their jars. You will need one potato, one onion, a plastic tray, and a paring knife for a class demonstration. Have paper towels on hand for wiping up spills. To begin session one, review the parts of a plant with students and the process by which plants grow from seeds. Ask students, do you think it is possible to grow new plants without seeds? Accept all answers. Then place a potato on a demonstration table and explain that a potato is a tuber or a plant that grows underground and is thick with stored food. Distribute a magnifier to each student. Cut the potato in half and pass the pieces around to give the students a chance to feel the skin, examine the interior of the potato, and examine the eyes. Tell the class that the eyes are buds, or the beginnings of new plants. Next, place an onion on the demonstration table and explain that an onion is a bulb or a swollen underground stem covered with fleshy leaves. Then cut the onion in half from top to bottom, place the onion halves on a tray, and pass it around. Encourage students to examine the immature plant inside the bulb, the fleshy leaves that surround the plant, and the papery outer skin of the onion. Then ask, what do you think would happen if we planted the potato in the onion bulb? Accept all reasonable predictions. Divide the class into teams of four and distribute potatoes to one half of the teams and onions to the other half. Give each team a clear plastic jar, a piece of masking tape for a label, and three toothpicks. Instruct them to insert the toothpicks into the potato or onion and suspend it over the jar. The potato should be positioned so that most of the buds are above the waterline. The onion should be positioned so that the root base of the onion is underwater. Fill each team's jar with enough water to cover the bottom of the plant part. Then have students place their jars in a warm location out of direct sunlight. Next, distribute a copy of Activity Sheet 10, Part A to each student and two boxes of crayons to each team of four. Instruct students to add buds to the diagram of the potato and draw the immature plant inside the onion bulb. Then place the African violet plant on a demonstration table. Give students an opportunity to examine the flowers and touch the fuzzy leaves. Ask students, how can we grow a new plant from a part of this one? Accept all reasonable predictions and explain that a cutting is a plant part such as a leaf or part of a root or stem from which a new plant can grow. Have a student from each team come up to the plant and snip off a leaf cutting from the stem at about five centimeters below the base of the leaf. Make sure to give students time to examine their leaves with their magnifiers. Next, demonstrate how to insert a leaf stem through the hole in the plastic wrap and into the water and encourage students from each team to do the same. Then, place the jar of leaf cuttings in a warm place out of direct sunlight and instruct students to check on the potatoes, onions, and leaf cuttings every day. 
Students should refill the jars with water as necessary and replace the water every few days. To conclude session one, discard the demonstration potato and onion halves, wash the paring knife and tray, and return the materials to the kit. Plan to conduct session two in about two weeks when roots begin to appear on the plants. To prepare for session two, make a copy of activity sheet 10, part B, for each student. Each student will need a magnifier. Each team of four will need two boxes of crayons, a plastic tray, their jar containing the potato or onion from session one, and access to the jar of leaf cuttings. To begin session two, distribute a magnifier to each student and a tray and two boxes of crayons to each team of four. Half students retrieve their jars of potatoes and onions. Then distribute one leaf cutting to each team and tell them to place the cutting on a tray for observation. Encourage students to examine the plant parts and note how they have changed and then swap jars with another team so that all students have an opportunity to observe both potatoes and onions. Next, distribute a copy of Activity Sheet 10, Part B to each student and have students complete the sheet. Ask students, what are three ways in which new plants can be grown from parts of old plants? Students should answer that new plants can be grown from buds on tubers, from bulbs, and from leaf cuttings. Finally, let students know that in the next activity, they will learn about how plants defend themselves to survive. To conclude session two, return the leaf cuttings to the jar of water. After healthy root systems have been established on the plants, you may wish to transplant them to soil. Return the magnifiers, trays, and boxes of crayons to the kit. For science background, reinforcement activities, curriculum connections, and information about the Delta Science Reader, please consult your DSM teacher's guide.